This is your guy, Manny, and this is the Back Row Redskins Show. Hey, Ryan, how's it going, brother? What's good, man? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you perfectly, man. Yo. Man, it was lots of obstacles, man. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Guys, I have my very good friend, Ryan Trotter, here. He has his own podcast as well from the Weekly Audible. So, guys, be sure to check him out. So, Ryan, welcome to the show, bro. Appreciate you, man. I this is I know this has been a long time coming for the both of us, so I appreciate you having me on, man. This is awesome. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much once again. So, man, uh, Redskins Nation, <laughs> we have a lot to talk about tonight, <laughs> and uh, we just really had to get this episode going because, I mean, this is so much to talk about, so much to bring to you guys, but I wanted to start off with some of the smaller topics, and then we'll get into the big topic that everybody really wants to hear about so um what are your thoughts of uh steve sims jr i got you man so i guess right off the bat i could just say the best thing about being on this is i can finally just talk about my fandom i guess that's the one thing that's so great because like being on the podcast that i own um with weekly audible we have to we try to keep it so non-biased so we we try to just talk about everybody the same way and me being from the DMV area, I'm a huge Redskins fan, and one of my co-hosts is a huge Redskins fan. So it's so hard <laughs> to you. not talk about it. But, yeah, I'm glad we're doing this. But Steven Sims, I am a huge, huge fan of Steven Sims, dude. Um, when we when he was undrafted to us, I knew a little bit about him because I like to follow a lot of the college guys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was a huge fan of his when we got him. Um, I remember when – in training camp, it was between him and Simi Cobbs, who are the two like oh, yeah. big receivers that we got that were undrafted. Um, I was a huge Simi Cobbs fan because I remember I've been a Redskins fan for as long as I've been born. So we've always really strived for that huge kind of Art Monk like receiver that can move the chains, big type of guy. And Simi Cobbs filled that. I thought he was going to be the guy to kind of fill that that slot that Steven Sims took over. Right. And I was just like, holy shit, looking at this guy, I'm like, wow. I remember watching him in preseason, just returning kicks and doing a bunch of special stuff with us. And I'm like, wow, I really like this guy. I know we just kind of lost, we lost to Sean Jackson. We're kind of, we need to fill that kind of speedy hole that we needed to fill for so long. And I remember watching this guy, Steve Sims, and I'm like, I'm not a big Trey Quinn fan. Like, just give this guy a shot. Who cares? He made the team. (laughs) Give him a shot, man. And then I remember the very first game we put him in was that New England game, and boom, mm-hmm. he ran that little that little uh, reverse off the end for a touchdown. I'm like, I tried to tell you guys earlier, right? <laughs> so um, Steven Sims, I'm very excited for him, man, and especially with this Scott Turner run offense, I think we could see a lot of really special things coming out of Steven Sims this year. Likewise, my whole thing with Steven Sims was. I actually got to know Steven Sims a little later in the preseason, to be honest. Like, I didn't even know who he was when the preseason started. Right. Uh, it's like the last couple of years, like, I've been focusing on a draft and focusing on the undrafted. But I saw Simi Cops, okay? I was a Simi Cops fan. Isn't he, like, about 6'3"? Yeah, I think when I think when he came out, I think he's, like, 6'3", 6'4", pushing 230 easily. Yeah. So I was like, man, this guy is big. I've been looking for a big receiver, and I'm finally glad we have gotten one. Yeah. But I was like, man, see me, Cobbs. And I saw a couple other receivers, and including um, I think Cam Sims might have been yep. a rookie. Was he a rookie or second year? So that was last year was his second year. We had him last year, and he was kind of like our preseason superstar. Right. I, rem- I remember a couple years ago, he we played the Jets in preseason, and he went up and had a one hit down mm-hmm. and he had like I think I don't remember the stats but he had like probably six catches 90 some yards two touchdowns and people are looking around Redskins fans were like who is this guy like, right this is this is our guy like <laughs> Terrell Pryor was a complete dud this is gonna man. be like our Terrell Pryor right <laughs> man like 
because cause like you know towards like the end of the preseason then I'm seeing like another Sims and I'm like man what the heck is going on Sims Sims I'm like who is the real Sims man and then you know I heard a comment that Sims reminds uh, Haskins of um, Antonio Brown and yeah that's when my eyes opened up I was like okay yep then I'm hearing Kelvin Harmon baby Julio I'm like okay but I was big on Harmon you know coming into the draft so i'm like man this seems this seems guy okay so then he makes a team and then like you said that new england game he goes off and i'm like this guy is gonna be special i was in a deep fantasy league when i say deep i mean super deep (laughs) (laughs) this league is so deep to where i had to grab i think it was like a 20-man league and a whole bunch of roster positions if you play fantasy so I grabbed a lot of running backs because I knew the running backs were the hardest to grab. Yeah. Then at the end of the draft, I'm like, man, I don't know who the heck is going to start for the Redskins. I don't trust garbage Doxon. Nobody um, knows who starts for the Redskins, dude. Right. So then I, <laughs> I, I, I grabbed Terry McLaurin because I'm like, you know, he's a rookie. He might do something. I think they say he's going to start. So I grabbed him and I grabbed Paul Richardson because somebody yeah. got to catch the ball. Then – Rich, uh, uh, Terry McLaurin goes off, and then later on, I pick up Sims, and I end up winning the league. Let's go! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing was, the guy that ran the league started cheating. He switched all the rules mid-season. It was a, a, a twenty-man league, but only four guys make the playoffs. Was, was this wrong. was this league you were playing in PPR? Yes, it was PPR. Okay. So you could start four running backs. So I had like four of the best running backs in that. League. Holy shit! You could play four running backs at one play time. Four run- yep. So that's Damn, why I dude. grabbed. <laughs> I grabbed uh, uh, Alvin Kamara. Grabbed when they came back around. You know, if, if I'm picking number two, then by the time it comes back around, I'm picking. Like, yeah. I'm picking number forty. Something. Yeah, you I'm got like, a long way to go. Yeah. So then I grabbed uh, Chris Carson because I believed in him. I grabbed Sony Michelle. I grabbed Carlos Hyde, and I grabbed Darius Geis. So I grabbed five running backs. I didn't care. And every week I was starting four guys. It wasn't PPR. Yeah, sorry. It was not PPR. And then my wide receivers that I drafted was Terry McLaurin, Devontae Parker. And we know that Devontae Parker goes off. Okay. He had a great year, dude. So these were guys I got at the end of the draft. And Sims Jr. and McLaurin won me my fantasy. I love that. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I think that uh, game against Dallas – um, Sims Jr. had maybe two touchdowns, something in the, like that. In the last game, yeah. Yes, and the and the funny thing is the league went into week seventeen. Let's go. And Sims Jr. caught them two touchdowns <laughs> and sealed the deal. I'm like, I look love at that. I'm like, look at my team. Look at I, my. <laughs> so we're looking back at that too. Like, I think the reason so many people, especially Redskins fans in general. Nobody really knew who Steven Sims was because he played for Kansas, right? right. A lot of people watch Big 12 football, but mm-hmm. everyone, no one cares about Kansas. Right. I think Charlie Weiss probably had them like 2-10 and 10 when probably Steven Sims was there, so like no one cared about him. Like McLaurin right. played Big 10 football and played Ohio State with Haskins. Mm-hmm. With, that was a dynamic team with Urban Myers, the coach. I watched right. a ton of him because like, I grew up, like I said, I grew up in the DMV area. I'm a huge Maryland Terps fan, so um, we suck. So I have to watch a lot of Big Ten when we end up playing them. But the great right. thing about that was, like, when Maryland – Maryland sucks. But when <laughs> when Dwayne Haskins was there, we took them to the, to the last minute. Like, and I don't know if you remember that game, but Maryland played Ohio State, and it, the final score was, like, 52 to 45. In I, Ohio State. <laughs> yeah, it was something like that. It was insane. And, mm-hmm. you know, that was my first kind of showing of Dwayne Haskins as a quarterback and right. just that team. Like, I saw McLaurin. I think McLaurin scored twice in that game and that just Paris Campbell and J.K. Dobbins, all those other guys. But that that was the game that got me in love with Dwayne Haskins. Hey, speaking of Dwayne Haskins, the funny – I have a funny story. So I went to two colleges here in Tennessee – um, Austin P and then Tennessee State University. So when I was at Austin P, met up with some guys, last name is uh, Haskins, and we all became friends. It's three brothers, RJ Haskins, Brian Haskins, and David Haskins. Now, these guys are related to Dwayne Haskins. Their dad and Dwayne Haskins' dad are first cousins. 
I love that. So, and they're all from, you know, New Jersey, New York area, and they're all a Giants fans. Right. So two of them liked Dwayne Haskins. The other one didn't like Dwayne Haskins. He was like, you know, he don't want Dwayne Haskins on his Giants. He would rather go for Tua, blah, blah, blah. So then come, you know, it comes to the draft, and I'm praying. I'm praying to God. I'm like, please, Lord, we need Dwayne Haskins, and I do not want to trade up. I do not want to trade up. Dwayne Haskins falls to 15. They draft <laughs> Andrew Jones. I'm laughing. We get Dwayne Haskins. I'm excited. And then now it's like I converted one of the Giants fans to being a Redskins fan. So that's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's so pretty funny. That's the one thing that, and again, I'm not trying to stir up any shit because I don't know who watch, who listens to this podcast or not. I'm assuming not too many Giants fans, but no, I don't, I'm assuming you follow Redskins today on Twitter and Instagram. Jordan, who yep. runs that account, he's a great follow, by the way. Great guy, yeah. The yeah. one thing that I love that he likes to do is he likes to screenshot shit. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I love to see from Giants fans when Dwayne Haskins was coming out, everyone was all over Dwayne Haskins. He kept every single screenshot, right? <laughs> oh, the Giants are taking Dwayne Haskins. He's going to look so good in the blue. He's going to be a New York Giant for life. And there's screenshots of like Giants fans like that already edited the Giants jersey on Haskins. Right. And then all of a sudden they pick Daniel Jones and he slides to us. And those same people who tweet that out or like, he's going to be a bust. Dwayne Haskins is going <laughs> to suck. Like, really? You just called for this guy like a week ago. Right. And they now they're, the same thing with Chase they're doing Young. the same thing with Chase Young now. And I'm like, you people are ridiculous. Just take your Daniel Jones, take care of your 30 fumbles a season and move on. Yep, yep, yep. And you know what's so funny, too, about the Giants was, um, uh, what's that guy? Andrew Thomas. So before I found yeah. out who Chase Young was, you know, Andrew Thomas, you know, he was getting a lot of hype. So I started paying attention to Andrew Thomas. I'm like, man, this guy might fall to the Redskins in the top five. You know, yeah. so I'm like, Andrew Thomas, Andrew Thomas, Andrew Thomas. And then, you know, as the season goes on, I do see him. He is very good. But then there are other tackles that are, you know, had more more, more um, um, yeah. upside. So the funny thing is, now that he's with the Giants, I'm like, man, I hope he sucks, man. Yeah, Look and the, Andrew Thomas, you know, the only real highlight that people have of Giants fans now that are trying to shit talk Redskins fans is when Andrew Thomas and Chase Young were going into college. There's a highlight out there oh, yeah. when they were in high school when Chase Young was probably 170 pounds, right? And Thomas pretty much bitches. I'm like, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Like he pretty much throws him around like a rag doll. <laughs> but Andrew Thomas was the same size that he is now. Chase Young was, I think, at the time of that video, that was, I'm assuming, 2015 when he came out. Uh-huh. So he's probably 6'3", 6'4", 180 pounds soaking wet. All right Now he's 280 pounds and looks like a monster truck. <laughs> I'm... I'm. I don't know. People. People have no idea what Chase Young is about to do for this defense, man. Right. I, growing up in this area, I grew up in the PG County, kind of around PG County. So, I watched a lot of Demetha football, which is where Chase Young went, and I watched him play in high school. Even as that skinny kind of guy, dude, this guy is unreal on the edge. It's. It's going to be amazing what he does for our front seven. Hey, I grew up in uh, PG County as well, man. Let's uh, go. I went to uh, Fairmont Heights High School. Yeah, I'm f- <laughs> I'm familiar. Let's go. Small yes, world. Sir. Yes, sir, man. Landover Hills, Heightsville, Maryland. I, I was right by the stadium, and the funny thing was I finally went to a Redskins game uh, about two or three years ago for the first time, and that was after I moved out, uh, moved out of uh, Maryland. So, yeah. you know, going to that stadium, man, uh, it was empty. It was empty. Um, you know, it's been a lot going on over the years on why the stadium is healthy. I mean, uh, not healthy, but, uh, you know, empty. Um, so, and the game that I decided to come down to see was the Atlanta Falcons versus the Redskins. And um, they killed us. Um, Alex Smith was just checking down all day yep. long, all yep. day long, man. He, uh, that was the game that Mo Harris had, like, I think 14 catches. Yep. I remember that game very well. <laughs> and uh, I had, like, the best seats ever. I had these things called dream seats where I was just one row from the field. So it was like a row, then me. So I was right behind the Redskins um, team. Um, I was messing with uh, Tre- uh, um, Tress Way. I'm yeah. Like, way, way, way. He turns around and he looks at me and winks and 
gives me a thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, that's my punter right there. You know, it's so, our best player right there. <laughs> yes, sir, man. <laughs> and you know, he was the best guy on the field for us that day. Yeah, we punted so much, man. And uh, you know, we got blasted. Julio was just destroying. Yeah, Josh I uh, I fully uh, remember that game solely because I played against Julio Jones in fantasy that week. Uh, yeah, I got my ass whooped. Man, all of my friends from Maryland that I play fantasy football with were they were like, so you flew all the way from Nashville to DC. I walked to Maryland to watch your team get blasted. I was like, yep, HTTR, baby. That's the that's the beauty of our fandom, dude. We might suck, but we're we're one of the most loyal fan bases. Man, no the cap. Most, the most loyal. Now, um, I saw something about uh Steve Sims. He said he wanted to be like uh, uh Steve Smith. And the reason why he said that was because, you know, the minute that Ron Rivera signed. One of the first moves he made was to sign a bigger receiver in Cody Latimer. Yep. So when he made that signing, you know, uh, Sims was like, well, I guess he don't like small receivers, you know. And he was like, well, uh, uh, Steve Smith was, you know, 5'9", but he was tough as nails. I mean, he was yep. strong. He was like a different 5'9". You know, yes, he returned kicks and did a lot of shifty things, but – these are two different kinds of receivers. And I'm yep. not saying that Sims uh, can't get as strong as uh, Steve Smith, but uh, what do you think about that um, About that comment? Yeah, I see that. I, I see what you're saying there. So um, when that first signing came out with Latimer, um, I kind of looked at that merely as depth. I saw a lot of stuff on our like Redskins Twitter that was kind of seeing that as like, oh, that's going to be our number two. That's going to be our number three. And when I first saw that signing and just kind of seeing how Rivera runs his team so far, I looked at that merely as competition and depth. Mm -hmm. I didn't see Cody Latimer making it out of training camp, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a huge I'm a huge Calvin Harmon stand, but we'll get to that. But in terms of Steven Sims, um, uh, that's tough, man. I don't really see him. To be honest with you, I don't see him as the way that's uh, I, don't, I don't really see him compared to, to Steve Smith. Um, I think they kind of play, I think they kind of play football two different ways, right? So like mm -hmm. Steve Sims, the way that Steve Smith kind of played football, you would kind of think of him with his size to kind of be that speeder that burns you off the edge. Mm -hmm. He was the complete opposite, right? Like he's right. the type of guy who you would battle in the trenches for. If you got a third and eight or a third and nine, third and 10, whatever, he's the type of guy you would throw to seven yards. You yep. throw it to him seven, eight yards. He'd have three yards to fight for, and he yep. would make the first down. <laughs> stiff like, arm, stiff arm, right, stiff that's arm. the that's the crazy thing about Steve Smith. And when he came to Baltimore, I saw a lot of games. Obviously, since I live in Baltimore, and they don't they don't unfortunately air Redskin games in Baltimore, so I had to watch a shit ton of Ravens games. <laughs> but just watching Steve Smith when he was on Carolina and in Baltimore, that's how he plays the game. Right, he doesn't try to burn people on the edge, which he still can do. Mm -hmm. But his main focus was either to, all right, we have a third, third and 11, third and 12, throw with me short, I'm going to fight the rest of the way and get the first down. All right. I don't see Steven Sims doing that yet. At all. All right. um, unfortunately, it's, you know, it's so early in his career to see how well he is actually going to play. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know, I'm not going right off stats and how he looks, but I want to say Steve Sims is like an inch or two taller than Steve Smith. Mm -hmm. I think he's 5'10". Yep, yep. And I would compare, and again, this is not me calling him this, but I compare Steve Sims more to someone like Antonio Brown than Steve Smith in terms of the way that he runs routes. I agree. He's not. Antonio Brown was never the type of guy to kind of run short and get past the first down. He beats people with his legs. Right. He beats the corners trying to get to the edge or to get to the middle of the field where he's wide open beating people with his routes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we saw that really, really well. Week 17, when we played Dallas, that route that Steven Sims ran, um, I think we were on like the seven or eight yard line. He scored his first touchdown. He hit a double move on the corner and the safety and burned them both. So I think that's the way you could probably really compare Steven Sims is through his route running. Right. Um, do I think he's going to have a good year this year? Yes. Do I think he's going to overtop what he did this year? Absolutely because he didn't play every single game this year, last year. Mm -hmm. I think he'll start in the slot, but I think there's going to be a lot of rotating pieces. It's hard to tell how Scott Turner's going to run the offense now. Since right. Obviously, we haven't had training camp. We don't know what the hell they're going to look like. Mm -hmm. But I do see him having a more um, 
he's going to have a bigger role than he did last year. I think they're going to use him more than just a wide receiver. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, I've talked about that as well. I see Steve Simmons as a guy that can line up everywhere. And then not only that, in the backfield. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, some Wildcat stuff. I can see him and I can personally see him and Antonio Gibson kind of running the same style of play. Yep. 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 I um I, I like I had a tweet a long time ago and I was like, I see Antonio Gibson and even Steve Sims in the Curtis Samuel role. Yeah. Rather than the Christian McCaffrey role. Because Christian McCaffrey, you know, runs through the middle and catches, goes through the slot. But I see these guys kind of like that Curtis Samuels kind of guy. I couldn't agree more with that. I could not agree more with that. I I know they're listing Antonio Gibson as a running back, but I don't Mm -hmm. think he's going to be like a, like a, you're going to see him running first, second, third down type guy. (laughs) Right. He's not going to do that. He's just going to line up as a running back, but he's going to be a receiver. Right. Right, right. So that's a guy that I'm going to grab in my dynasty league late, late, late in the draft. Yeah. And I'm just sit on him because we don't know about the health of guys. I hope guys is healthy. I love guys. That's my guy. I just hope he stays healthy. Yeah. And then with Bryce Love, we don't know what's going on with Bryce Love. And then, I mean, we have so many question marks on in the backfield. That is crazy. So um, that's yeah. probably I probably have a good question for you then, because I asked okay. this to my guy who's a co-host of the Red, who's a Redskins fans too. We have so many running backs this year. Who do you honestly see making the team as a running back? Okay, so the four, I see us keeping four. Now, I know with Gibson, he's a wild card. So he's, you know, he's really he doesn't have a position. So I see us keeping AP. Yeah, that's our most e- important easily, back. easily. You know, that's, I mean, that's my favorite running back of all time. Yeah. So you got AP. You got guys, obviously. You got to let this rookie contract, you know, run its course. Then um, you have Antonio Gibson. Then uh, Bryce Love. If Bryce Love is not healthy and starts the season on the pub, then a guy like McKissick. Yeah, so I, that was going to be the next question. So you think McKissick's going to get the ax? Uh, him and uh, Peyton Barber. I, I, yeah. Those two. I don't think uh, we mess with those two if our guys are healthy because we drafted these guys. You know, I remember we traded back to gain more picks to pick up Bryce Love. Correct. I think the Kirk Cousins uh, comp pick was the pick that we traded back. It was. To get West Martin. And, you know, so that investment, I think we keep all the guys that we drafted. It's it's hard to cut him too considering yeah. he didn't play all of last year. So you got to exactly. see what he can do. This exactly. dude was literally a Heisman finalist as, as right. a college running back. Mm-hmm. And did you remember that running back that we drafted years back? Um I think his name was Seastruck or Lee Seastruck. Oh, Cam Seastruck. Yeah, something yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if he ever played a game for us, but I think at least he he saw a preseason clock. Yeah, at he least. was a uh Pretty much a preseason legend, kind of like a lot of Redskins players. But right, yeah. Outside of that, he didn't didn't really touch the field. Right. So we can't cut Bryce Love at least until we see what he can do. I mean, exactly. it'll it'll be dumb. I mean, we kept him all last year. If he's hurt this year, you keep him. I mean, he's on a rookie deal, and if he's on an IR spot, you know, hey, keep him. See what he can do, and see if he can be part of the future. You know, I, I think in the future, you're gonna see guys, uh, Bryce Love and Gibson. If 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 those guys are healthy and if they're not, guess what? We draft another running back next year. I agree, man. So I'm actually I hate Darius Geis fan, huge Darius Geis fan. Mm-hmm. If someone's going to get the axe and Redskins fans are going to be shocked about, I think it's going to be him. Mm. Um, I hate saying that because I'm a huge Geis fan, but right. just kind of seeing how Rivera's kind of running the system now, I feel like just looking at all the. The social media stuff's gonna piss him off. I, right. I know. I know. Guys kind of deleted his Twitter, but um, yeah. I, he I it then he, then he comes yeah, and then he adds he it back. It. Right. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna be a huge distraction to Rivera. I hope it's not. But mm-hmm. if someone who's on the roster now is gonna get cut, I think it's gonna be Guys. Sadly enough, I don't want that to be it. See it happening because I don't know what it is, but I think he really likes McKissick. I've I've read about it. I've seen it. People are thinking McKissick's like the Chris Thompson 2.0 already. Yeah. Uh, one thing about Rivera and Scott Turner is that they love their pass catching backs. 
And one thing we know about Rivera is that he loves versatility. So if you're versatile, man, you, you're going to be on the field. You know, so they really like McKissick a lot. I mean, it's going to be interesting. If they cut guys, oh, I mean, that's going to hurt. That is I mean, I hope I personally hurt. hope that doesn't happen you because know, I I love Geis, man. Right. My if, only if, thing if someone's going to get cut, it's going to be him. Right. My only thing is like at least it's let. I mean, he has what two more years left on this deal after this year. Yeah. Just see what you got in him. You know. I mean, he hasn't really played. <laughs> you know. So see what you got in him, and then because if it, hey, if this if he's healthy, and that's always been a thing. We've been saying that now just about every year. If he's healthy, if he's, but if he's healthy, I mean, look at the game against uh, Carolina. He's running back one. When AP's done, he's the guy. Exactly. So when you look at that Carolina game and you look at uh, – it was another game he had. He had two monster games. I think it was Carolina and maybe the Jets. I can't remember right now. But when you look at those games when he's healthy and how he runs, man, it's like – I mean, Rivera, Rivera, how can you cut this guy after – he runs all over your team, and then you get fired. I agree. Darius guys got you fired. So I think he buys himself at least one more year, at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on your board, man. Because yeah. I'm again, I'm a huge guys guy, huge right. guys guy. I think we actually have him lined up to. I think we're going to interview him on the weekly audible coming up here soon. That's um, awesome. He is, he's a good dude. Him and I have been talking for a little bit. He's a really good dude. He means so well. He loves the Washington team. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to be here, so I hope, I hope it stays that way. Because I, again, I'm a huge guys guy. I'm a huge fan of his. I know he's our he's our running back one. If he stays healthy, and we move on from AP sometime in the next couple years, like mm-hmm. he's our guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, and I'm ready for it, man. I have, I think I have two guys jerseys, man. I tell this story. Yeah. Um, when he first got drafted, man, that year I wanted Dares guys. I was willing to draft Darius guys in the first round. I was too. So that's how, to me, he was the second best running back in that draft. At the we, on Barkley. we made out like a bandit in that, get, <laughs> considering we got Deron yeah. Payne and Geis both exactly. in the first and second round. I was like, and then remember, we traded back in the second, like maybe twice. Yeah, twice. And, and that pissed me off. Yeah. That pissed, I was so <laughs> nervous, man. You don't understand how I pray during these drafts, man. I prayed for Haskins, we got him. I prayed for Geis, we got him. I mean, I was praying. And when we got him, I went crazy. Yeah. I, I went crazy. I prayed for both of the guys that we got there because I was I, I saw every mock draft that year, and we were slotted to get Vita Vea in, like, every single draft that I saw right. in the first round. I was like, dude, I don't want this guy. Me neither. Like, I, I get it. He's huge. He's a run stuffer. It's going to take two guys. But I want an athlete in the middle. Like, exactly. I want somebody who's, like, a dog, man. And like, Right. I think Deron Payne has proven like he is that guy, dude. Yep. yep. He can pick he, hey, he can pass rush and he can stuff run. So you get yeah. two for one. Vita Vea, yeah, he can probably possibly get to the quarterback, but uh, he's a different kind of animal. He's not the same kind of guy that De'Aaron Payne is. And De'Aaron Payne is gonna be that dude. He's gonna be that dude. He gets better and better every year. But back to that guy's story. So once we draft him, man, you know, like like the next thing is you gotta go get a jersey, right? Absolutely. You're waiting and you see that number one in the store. You just want in that guy's jersey. So man, I went online, man, and found some site, bought me a guy's jersey. <laughs> I said, man, forget it, man. I buy this guy's jersey. Man, it's like reddish. It's not burgundy. It's reddish. It's like that that dark red. Yes. <laughs> and and it's like, I mean, we've had jerseys like that in the past. You yeah. Know what I'm but it's like, come on, man. This is the future, man. This is the future. So I got this guy's jersey. Man, it's like a size too big. Oh, I never really won it but one time. But, yeah, you know, I went and got me a bootleg guy's jersey to say, hey, hey I'm one of the first. I'd still do it, too. I, I was the same way when we got Dwayne, dude. I didn't want to wait for it to hit the stores. Right. I got one of those bootleg jerseys off one of them random sites, and I got mm-hmm. a, I got my, I got the all-white Haskins jersey. So I, I, I needed it, dude. Smart. That's what I should have done. I should have got a white. <laughs> I really hope that happens week one, dude. I want the all whites so bad. Yeah. Same here, man. Same here. Oh man, this is so good. All right. Next topic. Um, we got um Steve Sims again and Jameson Crowder. Oh. Who do you think will have the better season this year? Are you saying total or just in receiving? 
Because I know they you both kind of do the punt returns. I'll say total. I'll say total. Why not? I want to say Sims, man. Um, I'm not trying to say that to be biased because he's our guy, but if you're just gonna if you're gonna put in the special teams aspect in it too, I'm gonna say Sims. Yeah, um, but it's again, it kind of just goes back to what I was talking about earlier. It's it's really hard to kind of compare them right now because right. we don't know how Steve Sims is going to be used. Right. Um, I can tell you right now, Crowder's going to have a good year, man. I know he's with over there with New York, man. They got really good draft when they got Denzel Mims from Baylor, great right. receiver. I think Doxon's over there now too. Yeah. Um, Brashad Perriman's over there as well. Um, he's still their guy in the slot, and I think it showed sometimes last year that. Uh, Darnold loves him, mm-hmm. especially like the first couple games, especially if you saw him in fantasy. I think week one, he had like nine or ten catches. Exactly. Like he, he racks up a ton of catches. Uh, that's the one thing that Crowder did so well in New York and with us as well. Like Kirk Cousins loved him. Man. Um, but in terms of overall, I think the only thing that kills Crowder is special teams. Special teams. And it showed a lot when he was with us in Washington. Yeah, he had a punt return against Baltimore when right. he was with us when we won the division. Yeah, that first how many, year, right? His first think, year. About, think about how many fumbles he had in that year also. How many times Man. he dropped the punt. <laughs> Man, like he – Started out well and then got so bad that they kicked him off of punt returns. That's like, what I'm saying, dude. I used to be so excited to have Crowder in the special teams. And it was like, man, whatever. Just do what you do on the slot. You know, so Sims, man, Sims is, to me, is just a different animal, man. If he just keeps working on his hands, I mean, the guy just has this kind of quick twitch, like, I don't know, some kind of sonic move that he does, and he just, phew, he's gone. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, he's I want to, I want to personally, I really want to say Steve Sims is the guy, and I think he will have a better year because now Darnold kind of has so many other receivers he can rely on. Right. Denzel Mims is going to come in and be the, the number one guy. I don't know if Quincy Nunez is going to be healthy, but Denzel Mims is that good. Yeah. They have Rashad Perriman, who had a fantastic year with Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doxon, who knows? If he has a change of scenery on a new team, he might play better. Who knows? But right. he has a lot more people to throw to. I think Steven Sims is going to be a huge player in this offense. And we, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. We have no idea what Scott Turner has in store for these type of players. And I think somebody like Steve Sims kind of fits the Scott Turner role of what he wants to use on that offense. Mm-hmm. So just solely from that, I'm going to say Steve Sims. Okay. Yeah, hey, that's fair. That's fair. I think Sims is going to be the guy um, out of the two. Uh, like you said, Crowder is a better um, slot receiver. You know, he gets open. He's he's more seasoned in, you know, working the middle. But overall, Sims. Because Sims can get you touchdowns out the backfield like we saw punt returns hopefully he gets some kick return burn this year yeah uh, i just want the ball in his hands man yeah i would I love need, to see that i need some bubble screens i mean i need it all i need everything from <laughs> I him a, i need a deep I, I need at least one deep shot man reverse <laughs> sweeps jet sweeps i mean screw it haskins looks good he can run run some option with him exactly. too who cares exactly now my next topic is who do you think will be the most productive wide receiver outside of Terry McLaurin? On the Redskins? On the Redskins. That is a great question, dude. Um, I've actually thought about this a little bit, and it I don't want to keep beating beating a dead horse here, just kind of saying we don't know how Scott's going to run the offense. But right. just solely, solely on production of who I think is going to get catches. Um, fuck, this is hard. I'm going to be the first person right off the bat. I love Antonio Gandy Golden. Um, I'm a huge fan of his. I loved him coming out of the draft. Um, if you guys ever listen to my podcast for Weekly Audible, I, I talk about <laughs> I talk about Antonio Gandy Golden all the time, man. Yep. <laughs> and my co-hosts kind of shit on me because I'm not comparing him to Julio Jones, but right. I said he plays exactly like Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. He's kind of that vertical threat who catches every right, and he he can beat you anywhere because he can just catch anything out of the gym. Exactly. He's so underrated but, and his speed is crazy. His game, exactly. speed, his game speed is everything. I don't care about what he ran at the 40. I don't care about no straight line speed who runs the straight line routes. 
you know, like you run, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's not all about straight line speed sometimes. Like sometimes exactly. it's about can you make that quick move in and out, you know, can you run a post? Can you do different things? And he's he's got great feet for his size, being mm-hmm. six four, two thirty, right. whatever it is. And I mean he's getting trained learning very good route runner himself. Right. Um outside of that, however, I do like Antonio Gandy Golden, but my dark horse since last year has been Kelvin Harmon. I am a huge, huge Kelvin Harmon fan, and I have been since we drafted Kelvin Harmon. Mm-hmm. He proved last year, and I kind of think he kind of falls under the radar with Redskins fans. People right. are kind of thinking about, oh, Antonio Gandy Golden is going to be a great number two. Oh, we might get a veteran guy like Antonio Brown or what? somebody that's going to help Terry out. People are forgetting about Kelvin Harmon, dude, and that's exactly. the funny thing. I want to say he ended the year with almost 40 catches, had a couple touchdowns, had a lot of huge catches mm-hmm. in some games. He can go up there and do the same thing that these other vet receivers are doing. He's the type of receiver also that I talked about earlier that the Redskins need. He's a big body. He loves to play physical. He moves the chains. That's what he does. Right. And I don't want to kind of say this lightly, but I was a huge Pierre Garçon fan when we had him. Same. I think Kelvin Harmon is the next closest thing to Pierre Garçon that we had in terms of how physical he is around the football. I agree. And I think he's going to prove that next year. I think personally that Ron Rivera is going to start him as the number two receiver. Yep. And I think until he messes up, he's going to stay the number two receiver next to Terry. I and agree. I think it's his job to lose. And I personally think he's not going to lose it. I agree. Imagine this. Terry McLaurin, Kelvin Harmon, and AGG being on a field all at the same time. I love that. Sets. I mean, if you think about it, you can put Harmon inside. You can put Terry inside. You can put uh, uh, AGG inside. See, we have guys that can do so many different things. I think you're going to see a, a formation like that kind of in the red zone, too, with just how exactly, big both of them are. Exactly. You have Kelvin Harmon, Kelvin Harmon, who's 6'3", AGG 6'4". Mm-hmm. Like, both of them, if Jay Gruden was still on our team, he would – Love that, just throwing <laughs> fade routes to the right day. Um, but yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of that formation that you just said inside the 20s. Right, especially without a tight end that we trust in terms of a tight end with, you know, we've had tight ends the past few years. So we don't have the caliber of tight ends that we've had. Don't get me in started on the of, tight end, bro. In terms of Chris Cooley and, and Vernon Davis, Jordan Reed, you know, even when we had Fred Davis, you know, he, he did some good things for us. So just start Thad him. Moss and pray. That's all I got to say about <laughs> the tight ends, dude. So, so, so you're a Moss guy. I'm, I'm not a Thad Moss guy, but I'm not a fan of any tight end we have on the team. I'm just going to say that. I feel you. I, I think, um, what's that guy's name? Dude, my so favorite my favorite name. tight end was Hale Hentage, who was my favorite guy <laughs> left on the team, and no yeah. one even knows who the hell that is. I know. I like him, too. He I, scored two touchdowns against the Giants, and I was like, all right, good enough for me, and he went to Alabama. So, all right, he went to a good school. <laughs> Fine with me. <laughs> right. So, I'll take him over Moss. Jeremy yeah. Sprinkle stinks. I'm not a Sprinkle fan. Yeah, when he comes uh, in, he comes in to block. He's a well, decent blocker. but it's Yeah, like, but on, he man. can't catch anything. Anything. Logan Thomas is unproven. He was a quarterback until three, four years ago, and he's already – I don't know what the hell he's going to do, but he burned <laughs> us when we played Detroit, so good right. for him. You know, he's, he's a big guy. He's athletic. It's just – can he put it all together? Like, exactly. I mean, you've been in the league forever, and we haven't seen anything. But I'm hopeful. Outside of that, dude, I have no idea. <laughs> Richard Rodgers isn't going to make the team. Nope. All them old guys we signed, ain't none of those guys going to That's make why the team, I'm man. like, that's why I'm like, start Thad Moss and throw your hands up to Jesus and hope it works out. <laughs> so, man, you know, with the big receivers we have, hopefully they'll help to negate the, you know, the lack of tight ends yeah. that we don't have. Um, I was going to say something and I lost my train of thought. But. Um, yes, the offense um, has lots of question marks, but at the same time, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? A lot of question but, marks, but at the same time, a lot of promise. Exactly. Kind of just back to the what we talked about with Scott Turner, man. Like He can have this formation in a lot of different ways. 
can you I can already see this now, just how he wants to run certain options and depending on who he keeps on the team. Mm-hmm. I can see him running something crazy like having Gibson and Sims in the backfield with Geis with Harmon or AGG and Terry on the side. Like I can see something crazy like that already in my head. Right. Man, the possibilities. I'm ex- look. I have not been this excited about the team since RG three rookie. I season. was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> so I mean, I'm excited, man. We we have so many guys that I wanted in the draft, and we got them. You know, yeah. like uh, Haskins, guys, Chase Young. I don't know about you, man. Chase Young is, is the next topic, but after a while, I'm not about tanking. But man, you know what? At a certain point in the season worked out like, pretty lose. damn well, dude. I was like, lose. I was cheering, but when we start losing, I'm like, lose on. Like, hey, there's no yep. shame in my game, and I want to chase Young at all costs. <laughs> I and was, uh, I was hanging out with someone. We were, I was actually, I went home for the weekend when we were playing the Giants that game, and that was pretty much the Chase Young game. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hanging out with my uncle and some of my cousins, and one of my cousins is actually a diehard Giants fan. And they, we went to the overtime, and the Giants scored a touchdown. He's freaking out that they scored that they won. And I'm also freaking out cheering that, that they scored. And he's like, what are you doing? You just lost the game. And he said, yeah, but you just gave us Chase Young. Thanks, dude. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that game, I was excited. I'm like, you know what? Chase Young is guaranteed. If this season is going to suck, let it be <laughs> worse. Like, let us get the best player in the draft. Right. That, that game like, oh. that game pretty much guaranteed us two <laughs> things. One, we got Chase Young and two, Bruce Allen's getting fired. Exactly. Oh man, it was like <laughs> oh man, it was beautiful. People didn't understand my joy. They're like, your team just lost. I'm like, I know. This is so lovely. Yeah. I said this was the greatest loss of all time. Um so going into my next topic, on a scale on a scale of one to ten, will Chase Young make the Pro Bowl team this year? Oh, that's a great question. Dude, and it's so tough, man, because everything with like these all star games, they're just, they're so, I, I'm, I can't even think of the right word to use here. Like, they kind of just pick fan favorites at this point of who they're picking to make the Pro Bowl. It's right. kind of like whenever I watch the NBA, I'm a huge NBA fan. The same. Um, and when I watch the NBA all star game, they're kind of just picking players who they like and just picking players who ESPN likes. Like, I I just saw the other day that they put Zion Williamson on the cover of NBA 2K21. Dude played like 15 (laughs) games, really? Man, it's it's a popularity contest. That's all it is, dude. And, like, when I look at, like, stuff like the Pro Bowl and think of the players who made it and who didn't, and I'm not trying to be biased, but, like, you're going to really not – you're going to snub Terry, but you're going to add other players that probably shouldn't have made the team. Like, Terry had a great year and only played – 13 14, games. Yeah, 13, 14 games. Yep, yep. Really, yeah, 13 and a half, something like that. Yeah, not even just him, but, like, just looking at some of the starters, too, who they started, and people who were not starters. It's kind of like the – it's like the NBA All-Star game. Who's who's the starting five and who's the reserve? Exactly. But at the end of the day, man, look kind of just on a scale of 1 to 10 for Chase Young. I don't know, man. I can really see him having a really good year. I could see him kind of having, like, a Montez Sweat kind of year, too, where he starts out slow and – gets really hot toward the end. Right. I'm going to go I'm going to go between 6 and a 7. I go with strong 8. Okay. And if I'm going to strong 8, that just means I feel this defense is going to be special. I agree. This defense is going to be so special that if you're playing fantasy, you better grab this defense with the last pick of the draft. Cuz ain't nobody touching the Redskins defense. No, no one's touching so, it. So I, I don't know, I just have such a great feeling of what this front four and this front seven can do. I mean, I, what I'm seeing in my head is only me and a few people that are that are actually seeing this. Like, I talked about it in my last episode. If Chase Young is doing his thing, the guy next to him is one-on-one. And if that guy is going off, then the guy next to him is one-on-one. Yeah. It's like, who do you double team? And the, the funny, the crazy thing about that is the guy next to Chase Young is Jonathan Allen. Oh my! Like that's the scary thing. Funny thing was, I thought it was pain. Oh, it's 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 about to go down. It, it doesn't it, even matter who it is. Exactly. <laughs> it, I mean, I I rather I rather Jonathan Allen than pain. Like Jonathan Allen is such a talented pass rusher. People don't see it yet, but they will. Yeah. They I will. <laughs> I've grown a huge respect for Jonathan Allen, and I don't know 
I know you listen, but I actually had we actually had Jonathan Allen on my podcast, and I've grown a huge respect for him. Not as just a player, but as a person, he is a great dude. Like it's not just about him as a football player, just kind of him as a person. And it's only his fourth year in the league, and he's already our captain. Right. Like it goes to show just how much of a leader he is. Right. And that's the awesome thing. And we actually asked him a question when we were on when he was on our podcast. And this is what kind of set him apart for me, which made me gain the most respect for Jonathan Allen. We were we just simply asked him, how do you think the Redskins defense is going to do this year? How do you guys think you're going to fare with Jack Del Rio and having all this new system? And he kind of just left it as this. He started out with this quote. And I've always thought about it verbatim, and I've written it down because I love it so much. His first quote that he said to us was, well, we don't have any expectations. We have standards. Wow. That was the one thing that stood out to me of him just saying those simple words. We don't have expectations. We have standards. That's the kind of defense that just Del Rio and Jonathan Allen, who's now a captain, Ryan Kerrigan as the veteran, they want to run. They have standards that they want to meet as a defense. Mm -hmm. And I think adding the youth that we all have now with kind of the veterans now with Kerrigan. Um, it's so weird to call Jonathan Allen a veteran, but I have to just right. adding, adding that mesh together, Landon Collins as well. Like it's, it's going to be something really special, dude. And I know a lot of people are probably ganging up on the secondary um, because our secondary is probably the weakest part of our defense. You know, there's a lot of raw guys that we don't really know how well they're going to do, but, our secondary is not going to matter if our front seven's getting to the quarterback every single play. Right. So it's, it's going to be a special group. And the one thing that people forget about our defense is Reuben Foster. Mm -hmm. If Reuben Foster comes back, I'm saying this right now, we're going to be a top five defense. If Reuben Foster comes back and he's healthy, we're making the playoffs and we're going to make a run. I say this, if the defense is special, it, it, it keeps us in the game. Prime example. Look at the New England Patriots defense last year. I know they, like, they kind of fizzled out towards the end of the year, but that defense was so good. Tom Brady and the offense was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> that defense kept them in the game. It's they true. created pressure. They created turnovers. I mean, they grinded out games. Yeah. They forced a lot of turnovers, and they scored a lot of points as a defense. Yep, And if that's something that Washington can really do this year, um, you kind of look at our schedule, too, of some of the teams that we play. Yeah, we have a lot of tough games uh, toward that middle stretch, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of games with this defense that we can we can win a lot of games that people aren't thinking about. Exactly. And, you know, every year we look at these teams and we say, oh, this team is special. This team is good. Blase, blase. And then the team ends up being trash. So we don't even know how things are going to shake up. Like right. the Rams last year were supposed to be Super Bowl Terrible. contenders, right? And then they were trash. So, you know, you know, things change. And then some of these bad teams end up being good. Like the Cardinals might be a good team this year. They might. I, I really like the Cardinals, man. You know, I think they're going to score a lot of points. I think they're going to struggle defensively, but their offense is going to keep them in a lot of games. Yeah. I agree, and I think they're kind of in the same boat as us. Like, their secondary is not that great outside of Patrick Peterson, right. but I think drafting a guy like Isaiah Simmons to add to the middle of that defense is going to be massive yep. for them. Yep. yep. And we play them. Um, come week six, we play them. I'm so. excited for it, man. I want it all. I want it all. Yeah. all in Arizona, options. that's going to that's gonna be a huge test to that young secondary we have with Darby, Moreau, uh, Moreland to see how those guys play. They're going to have to guard – you know, they're going to have to guard DeAndre Hopkins. They're going to have to guard Christian Kirk. They're still going to have to guard Larry Fitzgerald. Like, they got a big test there. Like, all season they have a huge test. I think we killed Colin Murray that game. Broke I don't know ankle. why I said week six. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant – I don't know why I said week six. We played them week two. Week I'm two, sorry. Yeah. Broken ankle. No, I'm just kidding. Knock on wood. Sorry. No injuries. <laughs> I don't wish injuries on anybody. But, hey, when we see you, Colin Murray, we're going to hurt you, man. So, <laughs> learn to I think slide. the even if we don't have a great year, I think the only game that should be circled on the Redskins schedule is week 12. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be when we play Cincinnati yep. pretty much. Yeah. So it's going to be Joe Burrow against Chase Young. It's also going to be Dwayne Haskins against du uh, Joe Burrow again from their Ohio yeah. State days. Yeah, um, I, I think they're going to be that's going to be a pissed off game for both of them. Right. Right. I mean, Haskins got to come out and ball like I, if we lose to Cincinnati, <laughs> man, I just don't know what to think. 
Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Something I in mean, me. By yeah. that by that point, if we if we stick with the injury bug and we're tanking again, I'm fine with that. So if we yeah, get yeah, Micah yeah. Parsons, yeah. I'm not gonna complain. Yeah. You know, hey, if if we end up being trash this season, hey, there's always that left tackle from uh or so, <laughs> oh Sewell, yeah. Hey, 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 and oh, if we, yeah. And if we get that guy, I'm sorry. The next year is the Super Bowl. I don't care what anybody yeah. has to tell me. I'm a he, uh, dude, I'm a huge <laughs> believer in Sadiq Charles though, man. I think he's gonna ball. Hey, I hope so. I hope. That he balls out so much that we say, you know what, we're good at left tackle. We don't need another left tackle in the yeah. first round. I'm, I'm hoping, know. I'm hoping he really has a good year. So then, if there is a chance where we do still suck, we can get a guy like Jamar Chase Jamar as a receiver, Chase. or if we get Micah Parsons to be that that middle linebacker for the, for ten years. Right. Oh man. Whew. Just the possibilities just gives me chills, man. Yeah, I, right. I love what we're doing. We're just <laughs> we're building. And we're doing it the right way. Yeah, it takes time, but I agree. When everything clicks, it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna be like, remember yeah. when we were trash? Not to year, mention this year, this year. Not to mention we're gonna have like 120 million dollars in cap space. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Who? Okay, man. You know what? New topic. Who do you want next year as your top free agent? Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. I yeah. would love Keenan Allen with a passion. That's a nice. Um, one. If you're looking at guys who aren't, so we're still going to get re-signed, but are technically going to be free agents. Right, yes. So yeah. if we're going by that route, it would be George Kittle, 1,000%. Because I know George Kittle, said, said uh, he's set to be a free agent next year, but there's no chance in hell that San Francisco doesn't sign him. Okay, two things. I remember what I was going to say earlier. An interesting fact. Do you know... That George Kittle and Jeremy Sprinkles was drafted in the same draft in the fifth. Yeah, round. how weird is that? Fifth <laughs> round. Oh, how weird is that? Goodness, man. That's um, so how weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> that pisses me off. And my second thing is the guy that I take is Jalen yep. Ramsey. He was at, he was actually going to be my next. Man, look, I am throwing the bag at him. Like, what do you want? Even kind of with the. Years. Kind of with that character issue on the back end, even with the character issue, because yeah, when he comes to this brotherhood and the way that this defense is just so tightly knit, he don't got no choice but to fall in the line. Yeah, with I couldn't the, agree more, dude. Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio, Jalen Ramsey shutting down one whole side of the field. Yeah, with that, oh my. My only issue with Jalen Ramsey is that we kind of already did that with Josh Norman, and I didn't want to kind of him for him to do that again i feel you um we kind of throw the bag at the the best cornerback out there throw him the most money and then he comes in here and just does nothing that's well, the thing that i'm worried about well josh Norman wasn't the best cornerback out there i mean he was a top five cornerback that's true he was just kind of coming off like that amazing year yes and then and then then he was cut so that yeah. was like a surprise like oh he's cut we have money let's throw the bag at him and it yeah. worked in terms of just in them. just in terms of like dreaming. I know this would never happen either, but kind of just going over the free agents. I would love Ronnie Stanley also. Nice. Just kind of getting rid of Morgan Moses for once and we kind of solidify the right side. Ronnie Amen. Stanley would be awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah, get rid of uh, Morgan Moses, man. I, I, I'm so sick and tired of him. And sweet scenario, Kenny Galladay. Oh, yeah, dude. I love me some Kenny Galladay. And my comps for AGG is Kenny Galladay. Ken, yeah, I love and that. Cortland Sutton. Those are the two guys I kind of see, you know, because uh, they're big receivers. And yeah. They're more than just um, throw it up and, and just go get it. Those guys can go in. I mean, Kenny Galladay is so good at the deep ball. Yeah. I didn't realize that until I looked at his stats. He had like 65 catches for 1,100 yards, something like yeah. that. Yeah, he was the type of receiver that kind of got swept under the rug. Yeah, led the league in touchdowns. This yeah, year. granted, it's only 11, but still, 11 with touchdowns a, is 11. Yeah, touchdowns. with a down Detroit team as well, he right. really played well down the stretch with those bump quarterbacks. Yeah, he did his thing. All right, the next topic on our list, we're winding down. All right, over under. Do you think the Redskins average 23 points a game this season? Oh, 23 points. Damn, that is a tough question. I mean, you kind of look at our offense last year. Do you do you remember kind of as an offense what we scored last year? Man, it was it was terrible. 
It was. No, it wasn't good. You know, but at the same time, who was the coach and who were the players? Exactly. And the right. offensive line. Yeah, we have the injuries. Yeah. You know, not saying just kind of that we're gonna be like some amazing prolific offense, but sure, you know, I'm putting everything into consideration. Like, okay, oh yeah, you know, new coaches, and, uh, new coaching staff, new system, new offense. Yep, just kind of seeing how we're gonna run, and then you kind of look at the defenses we're playing too. So, I mean, you you just go right down the board. We Eagles, Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, uh, Rams, Giants, Cowboys, Giants, Lions. Bengals, Cowboys, Steelers, 49ers, Seahawks, Panthers, Eagles. Tough stretch down the field. Um, hopefully we don't have as many injuries as we do last year. We'll be able to play all those 16 games with everybody. Right. I'm going to go over. I'm um, right there with it's, you. It's weird saying it. I'm going to go over. I think we're going to be somewhere in the 24.5 to like 27 range. Um, I think it's, it's going to be crazy to see kind of how Scott runs the offense. And I think it's, we're going to be doing – a lot of stuff that we haven't done in a while. Right. We're kind of we're kind of getting away from the the kind of West Coast Kirk Cousins sit in a pocket and throw kind of style. Mm-hmm. I think Scott Turner's going to really push the limits with what he can do with the players we have just in terms of formations, in terms of how they're going to use everybody, and I think that's going to confuse a lot of defenses and I think it's going to lead to us putting points on the board. Right. We play a lot of good defenses Granted, they're toward the back end of the schedule, but I think it. I think it's safe to say we could put up 25, 26 points a game. I can see that. I can definitely see that. That's actually where I had us. At, I had us between twenty four to twenty six. Yeah, I I love that number. I I think we can easily do that this year. Right, at least twenty four. At yeah. least with all the talent that we have, the promise, the scheme. Uh, I think the scheme is very important. And we're going to move the ball, man. Hassan's left to sling that thing. Uh, we're ready, man. We're ready. We just yeah. need to uh, for this season to get started. But now to our final topic of the night, the biggest topic that everybody wants to. Got to get it off. Got to got to get it out. So, um, you know, with the name change, um, you know, they're forcing Dan's hand to change the team. We've had like Nike uh, pull their uh, sponsorship. Uh, we've had uh, FedEx pull their sponsorship, and some of the other top sponsors have pulled away. And um, you know, even with 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 the new stadium in uh, DC and all of that, if there's no name change, they're saying you know that Dan can't you know move the team. So, what is your stance on the name change and all this that's going on? All yeah. this trauma. So I'm I can keep it very short and sweet. Um, I'm keep the name full full and through. Um, I know it's especially with the kind of society we live in today. I know it's it's leaning in the right direction to where I know why they want to change the name. And for the reason why they want to change the name, I'm all here for it, because at the end of the day, we're trying to make a society where we're all trying to be one. We're all trying to be equal. And I think I agree with that. Right. Um, But at the end of the day, this. Us, we've been around since 1932. Mm-hmm. We've been. We were the Braves, and then we turned into the Redskins. Um, I'm all a part of history. I'm all a part of being a part of this team. And Dan Snyder came out and said, when this when this whole thing started about changing the name back in whenever that was, 2012, 2013, he pretty much said it in, in smoke, and he said it in all caps, and he was pretty much like, I'm never changing the name, ever. Good. And I think he's pretty much saying that because he sees this franchise winning something big in the near future. Right. Whether whether that's an NFC championship, maybe a Super Bowl, who knows? Um, I'm not going to be one of those Redskins fans that says we're winning the Super Bowl anytime soon. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right. But I'm looking at it from the sole fact of Dan Snyder and him thinking that we might do that sometime soon. And instead of him, us raising that Lombardi trophy, being the Washington Warriors or the Washington Warthogs or whatever the hell they're going to change the name to Razorbacks. <laughs> he wants to raise that trophy being the Washington Redskins because that's who we are as a football team. Absolutely. I don't care how people look at it. They can make it an issue with why it's called that or whatever. Like we've been this name for 80 some years from now. Right. And I'm not looking at it from an aspect of the name being a race issue. Um, and again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. I think the reason why they want to change it is great because we need to kind of make it into that society where we all want to be 
whole and we want to be equal again. Right. And I agree with that 1000%. But from a historical aspect of the franchise itself and just the all the success we've had in the past under the Redskins name, right. the Redskins logo, the fans, where we're located, whatever, all of that combines in itself. Like when you're right. a Redskins fan for life, you're not a Braves, Warriors, Warthogs, whatever fan. Right. We're Redskins fans. Like, and there's Absolutely. no other real way of saying it. Like, if 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 the season comes down to it where we have to change our name coming into this year, I'm not going to call them that name. Right. And that's just me personally. I'm still going to refer to them as the Redskins because that's my football team. Right. Um, I'm a younger guy, so I personally didn't get to see the greatness when the Redskins won the Super Bowls. Um, I'm only 25 years old, so I came in on the back end of, you know, Spurrier, Patrick Ramsey, uh, Mark Brunel, gotcha. all the times where we were kind of on that downslope of being bad. Mm -hmm. So I never got to really see the success of the great Redskin teams. Right. And I want to see that. Like, I want to see this franchise turn into that again. And I don't want to call them something else other than the Redskins Same. because when they were a good team, we were the Redskins. And for me, we will always be the Redskins because that's my football team. Exactly. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Um, uh, I'm all about keeping the name. I became a fan in 1999. So my first year is like that, um, Brad Johnson, Stephen Davis, the year that we yeah. actually had a chance to go to the Super yep. Bowl, believe it or not. And that was a great year for me. You know what I'm saying? My dad, put me on the Redskins and you know, I'm 33 and you know it was just a great experience and that's just what I'll always know Burgundy and Gold Redskins you know yep. I, I can't you can change the name and I'm yeah. still going to say Redskins yep. that's just who I am and that's just what it is you know what I'm saying so I'm all about keeping the name um, and the Americans I've watched you know several different things they are proud of the name you know um, they love that we use a name to represent them. You know, yeah. it's all but positive from where they're coming from. But everybody else, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's seen as, a, you know, a, you know, a bad name, um, a, a, you know, a racial thing. Yeah. But to the Native Americans, at least the ones that I've been seeing, they have not complained about it. For the most part, they love it. And it's part of history. And like you said, we've had this name for over 80 something years. And. I mean, it's a historical franchise, one of the greatest uh, uh, franchises in the world, one of the most popular franchises in the world, you know, and to just change the name now, you know, it, it's it's going to suck, man. I'm all for keeping yeah. the name and I that we keep the name because I can't see myself cheering for anything else but the Redskins. Yeah, I agree, man. And I think the bigger question, too, if they change the name, does that mean they're going to change the uniforms? Because... I think I would be more pissed off if they changed the colors right. than I would if they changed the name. No, I don't absolutely. care if they change the name, but if they take the burgundy and gold away oh, from this man. team, I will be pissed. Oh, man. Just imagine wearing green and purple. That's what I'm saying. I will be pissed and, off if they change my colors. Yellow and blue. I could care less if you make us like the Washington at this point i don't give right. a shit if you <laughs> right. change the colors i will right. be pissed it's all about burgundy and gold man it's exactly something about that burgundy and gold man exactly like, it's like every season when we play that first game and you know me being in nashville i don't get to see a lot of games like you guys see so when we are finally on prime time i'm like man this just gives me chills man i'm like whoa that's my team my team is on tv and it's always a treat whether we win, lose, or draw, it's always a treat for me because it's like it's something special, you know, something that I look forward to. Just that, just that burgundy and gold. Yeah, and I hope that goes nowhere. No, it goes somewhere it's kind of like I'm not saying I'm going to jump ship, but it's going to yeah. be like it, it's just not what it, it's. It's going to be a it's a severe gut punch. That's what it is, man. Like Absolutely. it goes. I don't care if you change the name. I don't give two shits if you change the name. You change the colors, I'm going to be pissed. Right. Right. I'm right there with you. Well, Ryan, man, this is a great show, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell the people how they can find you on social media. Loved it, man. I appreciate every single minute of it, man. We've been we've been talking about this for a while, so I'm glad we could do it. Um, Twitter, you can reach me on Trotter underscore three three one. Um, you can reach us. Also, you can find my podcast on Twitter. Uh, it's just the weekly audible on Twitter. 
Find us on Apple Music. You can or podcast wherever the hell it is. Find us on Spotify. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same aspect as what you're real laid back. We talk about everything, sports, basketball, baseball, whatever it is going on. And uh, it's really laid back environment. So I hope you hope we can get some uh, get some viewers from you. Awesome. You guys go check them out. And uh, Ryan, you are welcome back anytime. Uh, you'll be coming. You'll be coming on. A lot, okay. You're a regular. Love that. <laughs> you'll be you'll be coming on a lot, man. We're gonna <laughs> chop it up uh, anytime. But yeah, thank you so much for your time, brother. And um, stay safe, bro. As always, my guy. Httr as always. Um, you're a big fan of mine. Good friend now, man. Um, always have you on my show as well. Thank you so much. Thank you guys I for all of you, the brother. support. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Backrow Redskins. Um, also. Um, follow me on YouTube at Talking Sports with Manny. All of my podcasts are funneled to that YouTube um, page. So thank you guys for the support. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe on YouTube and as well as subscribing and uh, rating five star on Apple. Thank you guys so much. Love y'all.